Now that's scary. A game show that pits classic horror stories against by POC history to see, of the two, which one really gives you the chills. I'm your host, Patty Jacek. I'd like to welcome back for the third consecutive time, Terry Stoppenfanger. Terry, say hi! Hi, Patty. Hi, Terry! You good? Cat got your tongue? I'm humble now, Patty. That last time together changed my life. My whole comparative lit class is reading Dracula, but not me. I'm reading White Fragility by Robin D'Antonio. I'm doing the work. For those of you joining for the first time, this is how this works. We delve into a classic horror fiction story and pit it against the things that were happening to buy POC folks the year the story was written. At the completion of each round, the audience is going to vote on which scene they deem more horrific. The one from the horror story or the historical fact. After that, Terry is going to guess which way the audience voted, and if he guessed correctly, he correctly he wins the round. Terry, I know this isn't your first time around the block, but do you have any questions? No, I have no more questions. I do not want you to expend any more emotional labor. I'm ready. Wonderful! Let's take a minute to say hi to the audience. We're delving into the 1902 W.W. W. Jacobs classic, The Monkey's Paw. The story primarily takes place at the White's house when their friend the Sergeant Major comes to visit and spread tales of his time in India. While there, he got a hold of a magical monkey's paw which will give you anything you want at a price. Something about this story is racist. I can't quite put my finger on it. But that aside, I do believe it inspired Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. and when I tell you W.W. Jacobs can put a sentence together, I mean, you feel me? What do you mean? He's a writer, of course he can put a sentence together. Even people who don't identify as writers can do that. It's a way to compliment people, like what? Never mind. Anyway, while the Sergeant Major was over in India mutilating mammals, the Filipino-American War was coming to an end. There are a lot of terrifying moments from this war, but I would like to specifically focus on the Battle of Balanginga. Now, again, we're going to have to have a hefty backstory because, you know, when white Americans start clowning, there's really a lot of intricacies to unpack because if there's one thing they like to not be held accountable for, it's their clowning. I've got receipts though, don't worry. Picture this, it's 1898. Upon the completion of the Spanish-American War, the United States found itself with two Spanish colonies now in their hands. They knew they weren't going to keep Cuba, but were interested in annexing the Philippines. President William McKinley believed that it was God's will for the Americans to uplift and civilize and Christianize the Filipinos and believed that they were unfit for self-government. The treaty to annex only passed by one vote. Later that year, the Philippines declared war on the United States. It was a three-year battle in which an estimated 34,000 to 220,000 Filipinos were murdered. <laughs> Whose job was it to do the bookkeeping on the massacre, am I right? It's almost as if they didn't really care how many people they killed. Anyway, one of the most disturbing battles was the 1901 Battle of Belenginga. On September 28, 1901, 48 members of the U.S. 9th Infantry were ambushed by irregular forces made up of the chief of police, local police officers, government officials, villagers, and augmented by soldiers of the Philippine Republican Army. We're all rooting for the brown people whose country is being passed around like a cheap thrill, right? Because, ah, they won! But if there's one thing we know white people can come hard with, it's the vengeance. When the U.S. came back to retaliate, General Smith is quoted by the New York Times as saying, kill everyone over the age of 10. 
It is said that the United States murdered more people during their short time reigning over the Philippines than Spain did in their 333 years of rule. All right, let's play. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, wow. Like I am working through my fragility, but I don't know if I feel comfy. Like Which is scarier? Owning a dead monkey's paw or being 11 in 1901 in October in Balanginga. One minute on the clock. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. One second and time. Okay, let's hear from Terry. Terry, which one do you think it is? Being 11 in Balanginga in October of 1901. Yes! You are correct! Okay, next round. Which is scarier? Your dead zombie son knocking on your door or your son being dead because of US imperialism? One minute on the clock. It's the historical fact. You are correct! I'm shocked. Alright, Terry, which is scarier? To be held to task for your actions after your friend the Sergeant Major repeatedly told you not to use the paw and even tried several times to hide it from you and discard of it, or vengeful white men. One minute on the clock. seconds. 10 seconds. Time. Okay, Terry, your last question on now that's scary. Give it to me. Vengeful white people. Yes! You are correct. Good job, Terry. Thank you for being